morning squad welcome back to mad mizzy sports morning show the number one spot for everything sports talk sports news sports debate in the morning hope y'all have a great thursday today we got a beautiful thursday rundown of course we got to bring it in with the huge breaking news coming out of the white house Brittany griner is coming home gotta touch on that i told y'all she was not going to do nine years in no russian penal colony i knew that wasn't going to happen then I got to speak on Deion Sanders to Colorado and an Alabama assistant coach following him. What does that mean for Deion Sanders in the Colorado Buffalo? Then, of course, I got to bring y'all Mad Mizzy Power Rankings since it's Thursday. Top five NFL teams in the game right now. And then I'm going to end it off with Thursday Night Football breaking down the Las Vegas Raiders at the Los Angeles Rams. Predictions and what's the key matchup? Let's get right into it, gang gang. Great breaking news out of the White House. Brittany Griner is on a plane, is on her way home, has been released in exchange for the arms, the Russian arms dealer, Victor Bout. Victor Boot. What does this mean? This is just a huge landmark goal that was reached by Biden, his administration, getting Brittany Griner, getting her back on a plane, getting her home where she's supposed to be after being sentenced and being transferred to a Russian penal colony where it's a lot harsher than the Moscow jail she was being held at. This is just great news. You get what I'm saying? Just positive, great light news to start off the day, to start off the beginning of the weekend, seeing as it's Thursday. Um, to me, just want to say free Paul Wellen. The other U.S. citizen that's over there wrongfully detained, been over there for years. He's been over there locked up for, since 2018. So free Paul Wellen. Um, but just a huge win for the Biden administration, huge win for Brittany Griner. I know she's just elated right now on that plane ride home. I, I couldn't even imagine what she's feeling right now after being wrongfully detained for nine months. Hey, listen, the, the wifey better have some L's rolled up. You feel what I'm saying? I got to release some stress mamas. You feel what I'm saying? Some massage therapy lined up, all that. You feel what I'm saying? But great, great news. Welcome home. I told y'all, though. I told y'all when she got sentenced and then she was transferred to a Russian penal colony. She was not going to do nine years in Russia. That just wasn't going to happen. Let's move on, though. Deion Sanders um, officially signing to be the next head coach at Colorado. And you have Alabama assistant coach Charles Kelly joining him to be the defensive coordinator. What does this mean? This just adds on to the coaching that's going to be at Colorado to turn this program around. It's adding to how fast they'll be able to turn this program around. You have the transfer portal. Then you add in coaches that's coming from big universities like Alabama. So they're going to get that, that program turned around ASAP. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, they're going to turn it around next year. But I wouldn't be surprised if they have like an eight, nine win season two years from now. I, I wouldn't say that would be it next year. If they do that next year, then Prime might... Probably might, he might be too big for Colorado. You feel what I'm saying? But I would definitely see in the next two years them winning eight, nine games and being bowl eligible. Um, to me, I just love the moves that they're doing. Deion Sanders is exactly what they need. They need some swagger. They need somebody that's going to come in there, tell them how it is, tell them what it is and what needs to be done to get to that next level. So, yeah, I just love the move from Prime. And then I love the hire of bringing in Charles Kelly to be your defensive coordinator who was the ex safety and defensive assistant at Alabama. So huge, great news for Deion Sanders and the Colorado Buffalo. So let me dive right into my Mad Mizzy Power Rankings top five teams in the NFL right now. I'm going to start off at number five. I'm going to go with the Buffalo Bills. We had the news released yesterday. Huge breaking news that was released of Vaughn Miller being out with an ACL surgery. It's just shocking to me because Vaughn Miller, how do you go from being on your podcast saying, oh, I plan on playing this, this Sunday against the New York Jets, then you go on to saying, oh, well, well, not you, but the GM saying, no, we're going to put you on IR. You're going to be out for the next four games. To now, you getting surgery and it's, oh, yeah, he done. Like, that's just extreme. I don't think it's going to bode well for the confidence of the Buffalo Bills. I don't think it's going to bode well for just their defense in general. He is a huge playmaker. They don't get any pass rush besides Vaughn Miller. Their D-backs their are injured, fluctuating in and out of the lineup. So, I don't like that. But, I mean, of course, you still got Josh Allen. You got Stephon Diggs, Gabe Davis, Doug McDermott out there. So, yeah, I, I mean... I still respect the Buffalo Bills, but to me, they they dropped real far with the loss of Vaughn Miller. Let's move on. At number four, I got the Dallas Cowboys. To me, I just love what the Dallas Cowboys are doing. They, they won't win their division nine times out of ten if you ask me, so that's why I got them a little further down. Dak Prescott, they're just their inconsistency in the playoffs is why they're a little bit further down compared to the other teams that are further up in the in the order. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the Dallas Cowboys at number four. I mean, Micah Parsons might be the defensive player of the year, or it could be Nick Bosa, but you got Micah Parsons out there, Trayvon Diggs. You got all those dudes out there, defense playing out their mind. 
Ebron, Ezekiel Elliott coming back, Tony Pollard playing out of this world, Dak Prescott, of course. It's just all about can they keep it all together once the playoffs hit. That's, that's what it's about with the Dallas Cowboys. Let's move on. At number three, I got the Kansas City Chiefs. To me, I would have had the Kansas City Chiefs higher, but they lost to the teams that are ahead of them. Well, not lost to the teams that are ahead of them, but the team that I put ahead of them, they just lost to. They haven't beat them in a calendar year. But of course, you still got the possible MVP and Patrick Mahomes. You still got Eric Bieniemy and Andy Reid. So I, I'm not expecting them to fall off a cliff. I'm expecting them to get to an AFC championship game. I, don't, I mean, they've been there ever since Patrick Mahomes has been the starter. So to bet against the Kansas City Chiefs would just not be a smart bet. It just wouldn't be a smart bet. But let's move on. At number two, I got the Cincinnati Bengals. To me, I got the Cincinnati Bengals at number two because they might be the best overall team in the game right now. You think about they went to the Super Bowl last year. They came and started this year. Joe Burrow had to recover from uh, what he what he I forgot what he had some type of simple surgery. You feel what I'm saying? But he had to recover from that. Wasn't able to build his continuity and build on what they built in the playoffs last year because he had off-season surgery. Then they came out, they started a little slow, but they catching that stride now. Getting Jamar Chase back, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, I think they got the best receiving court in the game right now. Then you think about defensively, they're opp opportunistic, they take the ball away, and then they stop you once you get in the red zone. So I like what I'm seeing out of the Cincinnati Bengals, give them Give me the Cincinnati Bengals at two. And at number one, the Philadelphia Eagles. You think about, again, all of these top three teams that I mentioned, you got MVP candidates at the quarterback position. Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, and then, of course, you got Jalen Hurts for the Philadelphia Eagles. You got Miles Sanders, that run game that's revving up. Then you got A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. They got one of the best receiving cores in the game. Dallas Goddard, um, defensively, they're opportunistic. You still, of course, got Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, the, the old veterans out there. Then you got the young guys and the defensive backfield of C.J. Gardner-Johnson, Darius, big play slay. So I, I, I love the construction of the Philadelphia Eagles, clearly the best team in the league right now. That's my top five teams in the NFL right now. Let's move on. Let's break down Thursday night football of the Las Vegas Raiders at the Los Angeles Rams. The key matchup for this game is going to be the key matchup for most games that's not including Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, or Joe Burrow. It's going to be the trenches. Who's going to be able to run the ball better? Especially when you think about the Rams. They've lost the last five games. They've lost their last five games. No Matt Stafford. Backup quarterbacks playing garbage. Can't run the ball. Only averaging 87.3 yards on the ground per game. We know that the Los Angeles Rams, Sean McVay, likes to throw it around, look pretty, get the touchdowns, go to Cooper Cup, and this, that, and the third. But they build it all off of the run game, off of that stretch run play, just like Kyle Shanahan. So the fact that they can't run the ball this year, the fact that they don't have a quarterback, the fact that they talking about starting Baker Mayfield this Thursday after just signing them like, like last night. <laughs> Talk about we FedEx them the playbook. Doesn't bode well for the Los Angeles Rams. You look at the Las Vegas Raiders. They won their last three games. They're on a three-game winning streak. They're averaging 125 yards per game on the ground this year. Josh Jacobs, 1,300 rushing yards. Just absolute beast out there. They want to get back into that playoff hunt only two games out of that last last playoff spot. So I think they're going to be highly motivated to win this game. I think they're going to come out there and dominate. And then the Los Angeles Rams don't even have a strong fan base and so far, neither do the Los Angeles Chargers. So I think that the Raiders fan base is going to travel well. You're going to see a lot of Raiders fans. They're going to be loud. They're going to dominate the Los Angeles Rams tonight. I'm going to say 27-13, Las Vegas Raiders. Let me know what y'all think, though. Welcome home, Brittany Griner. Welcome home, BG. Free Paul Wellen. Um, yeah, just great, great news to start off the day. Deion Sanders to Colorado and Alabama assistant coach Charles Kelly joining him to be the defensive coordinator for the Colorado Buffalo. What do y'all think about that move? Mad Mizzy Power Rankings, number five team. I got the Buffalo Bills, number four team, Dallas Cowboys, number three team, Kansas City Chiefs, Kansas City Chiefs, number two team, Cincinnati Bengals, number one team, of course, the Philadelphia Eagles. What do y'all think about my Mad Mizzy Power Rankings? And then Thursday night football, what's going to be the key matchup tonight? And who do y'all have walking away with the dub tonight? night. Mad Mizzy Sports, like, comment, share, subscribe, listen, alert, Mizzy World Entertainment. Gang!